35 years ago, I was studying neuroscience and uh, biology. I was trying to understand how neural networks work. And uh, as I was reading these books, uh, I was reading about electrical signals, biochemical signals, and so on. But the word consciousness were never mentioned. In those neuroscience books, it looked like consciousness was identical to the electrical signals or biochemical signals that were going on in the brain. How is that possible? So that was the first time that I encountered consciousness. How come we are conscious? What does it mean to be conscious? Can a computer be conscious? All those aspects that we take for granted have an Im enormous importance because consciousness is actually what gives meaning to our life. Consciousness is about the meaning of information, whereas artificial intelligence is about transforming a symbol into another symbol without any meaning. It is about information without meaning. So the difference between the two can be faster. So now let's take a look at what can AI do and what can we do with consciousness. Artificial intelligence uh, has been a discipline that started really with computers. <laughs> and, uh, but the progress has been quite slow because many problems that have to do with pattern recognition, complex pattern recognition, could not be solved in the way in which they were approached. They were approached as if we could figure out the rules that determine what makes an apple an apple or a face a face. And those rules are really essentially impossible to derive from our introspection. Neural networks are uh, allowed to find those correlations automatically. And that really saved the day because with neural networks, it was possible to pass through a number of examples of patterns to be recognized. And the neural network would simply uh, find the rules that were inherent in all those patterns. Now, with pattern recognition uh, solved, or solved quite well, uh, now many of the problems of artificial intelligence that were outstanding could now be actually solved. Decisions that made sense could be taken, uh, and so on. Consciousness, on the other hand, is based on our capacity to understand what's going on. A computer only finds symbols to symbols translations, but we get the meaning through the experience of the information that our senses capture. And it is through that meaning, like a meaning processing as opposed to a symbol processing, that we can make decisions that are very often smarter than a computer can make. Because a computer, the, the, the moment you change the context, uh, the computer doesn't understand that now the information and the pattern is in a different context and then it cannot make sense of it. So what we call common sense is now possible uh, with consciousness, but not with computers. The question then is, how can we be conscious if we are supposed to be machines? We are told that we are machines. We are told that our brain is just like a computer, except uh, out of wetware as opposed to hardware. We are told uh, that uh, uh, we have no free will. We are told uh, that everything that we do really comes from 
classical information. But classical information has no connection with meaning. So where is the meaning coming from? See, these were the problems that 35 years ago I started to question. And it took a long time, actually, to arrive at the conclusion that consciousness cannot be a property of a classical system, like a computer. It must rely somehow on quantum properties of reality. So let's say a few words about that. Computers use bits. A bit is simply the simplest decision that one can make, zero or one, true or false. And the fact that our reality is describable with bits is because the physical reality, events happen with quanta. In other words, a particle appears or disappears completely as a particle. You don't see a little, par a little portion of the particle showing up. The whole thing shows up or disappears. A photon is captured or not captured all at once. So those are phenomena that are describable with bits, all or nothing. But a quantum bit, which is the extension of the idea of bit into the quantum realm, is not such an animal. A quantum bit, in fact, corresponds to uh, all the states that are on the surface of a sphere. So there are infinite states because there are infinite points on the surface of a sphere. So now we have a quantum bit that when it manifests in space-time, it manifests only as a zero or a one, as a classical bit. So the quantum reality is far vaster than the classical reality. And there is one more property that is uh, not well understood. It's called entanglement. When quantum bits interact, they create some states that, that are in common. And the states that are in common are maintained even after the particles that have interacted are, are taken apart and are moved uh, a, a, very, a large distance, what happens is when we measure one particle, the other immediately takes the complementary value that was achieved through the entanglement. And it happens without, irrespective of the distance, instantaneously, which means that there is something moving faster than the speed of light, which is supposed not to happen. We cannot transfer information with entanglement, but there, there is causality that is inherent in this, and that is really an essential aspect of quantum physics. Classical physics do not, uh, in classical physics, there is no such a thing as entanglement. So, recently, Professor Dariano and myself have created a theory that recognizes consciousness as a property of quantum systems. Not only quantum systems, but quantum systems in a very special state called a pure state. A pure state is a state that cannot be achieved by combinations of other states. So it's almost like uh, uh, something that goes beyond the sum of the parts. In classical physics, this is not possible. A computer behaves by interacting uh, programs that are the parts of the computer the interaction of these programs create the, com the behavior of the total computer, and that behavior is simply the sum of those parts. Some, obviously, not an algebraic sum, the interaction of the parts. In other words, the description of the parts 
describes what this system does and there is no system that is more than the sum of the parts. Everything that the system does can be described by what the parts do. And this, of course, is the essence of reductionism. Classical physics is reductionist. Bits are reductionist. But quantum bits, entangled quantum bits, are holistic. That property, the, prop, the joint properties, create systems that are more than the sum of the parts. And it is exactly here that consciousness then can affect the parts. It can affect the parts because there is some, there is a system that can actually independently know more, if you want to look at it that way, than the parts, and therefore can feed back to the parts. There is a path of feedback from the whole to the parts. So the essence of uh, the nature of consciousness through the uh, dariano fagin theory is that we have now uh, systems that are in a pure state, evolve by maintaining the purity of the states, and on top of that, they have also free will. In other words, they can make decisions that manifest as particles in space-time. So all of a sudden we have a way for a quantum system to communicate with a quantum classical system, which is a physical body. Our body is not a classical system, as we are told, is actually a quantum classical system because it's made of cells. They themselves are quantum classical. A cell manipulates atoms one at a time. It's not a statistical quantum system and as such can be affected by even one particle in the right place can make a change in the behavior of a cell. So it is a quantum classical system they can be uh, manipulated, if you want, controlled by a conscious system that exists not in space-time, but in Hilbert space, which is this space in which quantum systems and informational systems, uh, quantum informational system exist. Hilbert space uh, is uh, an n-dimensional space where each dimension is a complex number the sum of it, a real number plus a imaginary number. And they have these extraordinary properties that the sum of the parts can create a whole that is more of the sum of the parts. So now I have described a reality as made of essentially three systems, three types of system. One are computers. Computers are purely binary systems, they are reductionistic and the, there is no consciousness in them, no free will, they basically, their behavior is the sum of the parts. But the sum of the parts is not an independent self that can control the parts. So there is no overview they would come from something that would be more than the sum of the parts in a computer. Then we have living organisms. Living organisms are made of cells, and cells are quantum classical. So living organisms are a collection of quantum classical systems. Each system is a cell. And as such, by itself, a body should not be conscious. The body is conscious only if it communicates with an entity, which is the third entity that is conscious, that exists in the quantum realm, in the quantum world, in Hilbert space. So when the body communicates with a conscious entity in Hilbert space, then that body can be conscious. We if we are that body, we think that the consciousness is in the body, but in fact it is not. It is in a different reality. The reality 
the quantum reality made of qubits that are entangled. And in fact, that it is the entanglement that provides that uh, special property where a system is more than the sum of the parts. And the other thing that happens is that the experience that we have that is in the quantum world, that experience is private. That experience cannot be copied. There is a special, is a famous theorem in quantum physics uh, that tells, tells us, uh, that is called you know, cloning theorem, tells us that quantum information cannot be copied. The best that we can do is convert every qubit into a bit. So here we have one property that is not in classical computers. A bit can be copied. So if a computer were conscious, the consciousness of a computer could be copied like you copy a program. So there could be n computers that have the same consciousness of one. That is certainly not what happens with us. Our experience, the feelings that we have, are very private. So we need a theory of consciousness that respects the privacy of the experience, which is certainly not in a computer. So now we have a way to understand reality in which we can see that properties of the whole can control the parts and these properties are non-algorithmic. We, when we have an experience, that experience is not algorithmic. Not, you know, it may be uh, described by a quantum algorithm, but the quantum algorithm fails to describe the complete experience. And, and furthermore, that quantum algorithm, the information of the quantum algorithm, is, is not copyable, is private. So we have, the, we have the properties that are needed to have entities like us with consciousness and free will. But consciousness is not of the body. And this is the fundamental take-home uh, information here. Our consciousness is not, in a sense, in the, physics, in the classical physics or the quantum classical physics even of our body. It goes beyond. If we now take this into consideration and uh, try to understand reality with these three types of systems, all of a sudden we see that computers and AI will never be better than us. Our intelligence that is based on creativity, on comprehension, on invention, on imagination, on courage, on free will, that reality is not accessible to a machine. And so we need to use machines wisely through the wisdom that is only coming from our consciousness. Before concluding, I would like to say a few words about free will. Free will is fundamental in the dariano fudging theory. And free will provides a way to understand the collapse of the wave function which uh, is a non-understood property of quantum systems uh, that have no agreeable interpretation today. Quantum physics simply tell us how a system evolves within uh, the Hilbert space, but then there is a gap between that evolution of the system and a measurement. That measurement occurs according to uh, various interpretation by the collapse of the wave function. Some action somehow that has to occur that no, no one can explain. Uh, the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics simply says that there is the, the collapse of the wave function is basically that we cannot say anything about it. So in, a, some, in some sense is denying the collapse of the wave functions, 
but still there is a irreversibility between going from the quantum to the classical. There is something irreversible. With the Dariano Fagin theory, now the collapse is actually a free will choice, a free will choice that will manifest uh, a particle, particles that can then affect a cell by being amplified and creating uh, s uh, statistical signals that then can uh, affect computers and so on. And so we have a path from consciousness and free will to physical reality, the reality in space-time. And that is crucial to also give a sense to our life because what sense would have life if we, are, if we were not conscious and, we, and there was not free will, which is a position today that many physicists and philosophers uh, support. So now we have artificial intelligence that has properties that are complementary to the properties of human intelligence and consciousness and free will. We now have computers that can make operations much, much faster than we can do and deal with amounts of data unthinkable for us to deal with. But then these computers have no common sense. They don't understand. They have no free will. They are not conscious. They are not creative. And we have consciousness that has just the other properties that are not of artificial intelligence and robotics. So here we have an opportunity to collaborate and work together, but we can only do that from a position in which we are more than machines, not from the position that we are supposed to be machines controlling other machines, which is the position that many scientists are taking today. I hope I'm bringing you good news. I'm telling you that you are not a machine, unless you like to be one. Our consciousness can drive the show because it is our consciousness that finds meaning in life. It is our consciousness that finds purpose and comprehension and can work for the good of all. So AI can be unbelievably useful to the purpose of creating a better society by doing the things that AI is very good up at. And there are many things that AI can do that we cannot do. We are not fast enough. We cannot handle so much data as our computers can. But let's use our consciousness to create a better society using the wisdom, the comprehension, the creativity, the honesty, the courage, and the free will that only come with consciousness. Thank you.